And go. I forget your catch line. How does it start? Hey there, folks. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hey there, folks. Welcome to the Photo Video Show, where we explore all things DSLR. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and on today's show, we're going to be exploring how to catch a fish. (laughs) 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 Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to catch fishes with a boom pole. I just said we weren't keeping the audio. It's a boom pole. It's not a... This is a boom pole, not a fishing pole. Hey there, folks. Welcome to the Photo Video Show. I'm your host, Mark Puckett. On today's show, I'm going to show you how to make your very own boom pole out of something you probably already have in your house. And if not, it's just a quick trip right up to your Walmart. And then later, I'm going to uh, share with you my favorite podcast on the interwebs for photo and video enjoyment. So stick around. Let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start off by saying this is not the best solution, but it will work. So if you have some sort of microphone that has a quarter inch hole at the bottom, you can attach it to a ball head and then simply use a monopod. Most of us probably have bought one a time or two. In this case, I'm using the Targus TG MP6710. And although it's not really quiet while you're handling it, as long as you don't move your hands around a whole lot, the sound actually comes out pretty good. Uh, This particular ball mount has a special quarter inch mount on the bottom. And as you can see, holding it above your talon's head is going to be no problem. Uh, You can get good audio quality this way and if you put it down below underneath your talent and everything seems to be just fine. Now this particular ball head actually has a quarter inch screw hole in the bottom which makes it extremely versatile for a lot of situations at least in my case. If you don't happen to have a monopod and you have a light stand instead you can attach it to that as well. It works perfect and most light stands telescope to about seven feet. So you can hold the heavier end of the light stand and place it above or below your talent with no problems at all. And when it's all said and done, I've started using my flash uh, stands in order to use this as a tabletop microphone. It works extremely well. It slides right into the cold shoe on the stand works perfect. I can set it in any configuration, mount it, move it around up a little bit higher, a little bit down low. It's all good. And when all else, uh, you can still place it on top of your camera. It works extremely good as a running gun, shotgun style mic. And as you all heard in the audio test last week, it's perfect. Okay guys, I figured that it would probably be a really good idea for me to finally share the top five podcasts on YouTube that I like to watch. I mean, I guess we all have our favorites, but I have uh, a few of my favorites that I'd like to share. Uh, The first one would be Dave Dugdale. I enjoy his video so much because I think he's just a really genuine, honest guy. I mean, he's just, he's like the guy next door. He just, You can just tell he's really genuine and passionate about learning how to shoot video on DSLRs. And uh, I've been watching his videos for probably the last couple years now. I don't know if he's ever seen any of mine or not. So if any of you guys happen to watch Dave as well, let him know that I said nice things about him. Because I think he is. I think he's a great guy. The second podcast that I enjoy watching is froknowsphoto.com. Now, you can pick up a lot of awesome information from Fro. Um, he's a wealth of Nikon knowledge and he's always got disposable income to burn on D4s and big expensive uh, cameras that I will never buy but uh, just having that knowledge knowing that that centralized database of information is always right there at my disposal is key especially if you're a Nikon shooter be sure to uh, subscribe to Fro. And if any of you guys are Fro fans, please let her know I've said some nice things about him as well. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, I used to live out in Philly, very close to where he lives. Uh, I was on Northside, near around Oak Grove and Westminster. So let him know I said hello. Um, the next one here is um, One Lone Dork. Dot com. I believe it's DSLRFilmNude.com. I love this. I love this guy so much. Like, <laughs> especially his ending. So, if any of you guys uh, are interested in DSLR video, make sure that you check, you check out One Lone Dork. I don't know where this guy gets all of his money from, but I mean, he buys gadgets like constantly, all the time. He's got some latest gadgets, some shoulder rig, some you know, new microphone, some new uh, accessory uh, for his DSLR video. And I've really, all I've ever seen is his tutorial videos. I've never actually seen any of his uh, commercial work or anything like that. So it'd be interesting at some point to see what he's actually doing with all this equipment. So that's my number three. Uh, my number four would have to be uh, Final Cut King. Now he does a lot shorter, more commercial videos. But uh, Zach King is a wonderful compositor. He makes some of the best, most interesting videos. Uh, they just, they, they're very creative. And he usually wraps them around some sort of like game that we all enjoy playing, like Temple Run or uh, Assassin's Creed and stuff like that. So his videos are extremely viral. He doesn't really need a lot of my help at all. But uh, you can get some really good ideas if you're looking to just throw something together really fast with a few of your friends. He does it all the time, and he makes it look extremely easy. And I'm a little upset that I don't have friends that are into filmmaking around here. So, at any rate, that's my number four. And last on the list, it's going to have to go to... Um, everyone knows these guys. The Digital Rev guys. I mean, once again, they need no help whatsoever. But... They always do a lot of wonderful, wonderful comparisons. Uh, they do lenses, they do uh, micro four thirds, they do DSLRs, uh, they do Canon and Nikon and Fuji, and they just do everything. And I hear that the uh, Democracy out, they have access to all kinds of wonderful stuff. They do a lot of awesome street photography. And if you guys are into any of that kind of stuff, you should de definitely check out Digital Rev. And uh, if you happen to be friends with them, Please let them know I said hello, because uh, they have influenced many a buying purchase. So uh, Nikon can thank them for a lot of purchases. Canon as well, I'm sure. So just wanted to share those with you guys. I hope you found all of this information useful and handy. So please find us on Facebook, Twitter, be our friends, be our pals, and all that good business. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys again in another episode. I'm Mark Puckett. Thanks for stopping here at the Photo Video Show. See you guys again next time.